Take a look at this clip. Just as the Tesla Model 3 starts to go through the intersection, bam, right there. A car runs the red light, clips another car, and is sliding directly towards the Tesla. But what happens? The Tesla stopped automatically without the driver giving any input. And it did so because of the automatic emergency braking in conjunction with the autopilot cameras which are on the side of the car. Now there's some debate about whether or not this was actually the Tesla autopilot and emergency braking system or the driver themselves. However, if you pay attention, most of the other cars kept driving even after the accident occurred, but the Tesla stopped immediately, almost instinctively, as the accident happened. Fast forward a little bit. The car slides through the intersection, slams into the truck, and flips it. That truck isn't having a good day. This Tesla driver is, because the combination of the safety systems of autopilot and the automatic emergency braking. So the question is, is autopilot really safe? Thankfully, Tesla has given us a lot of data here to look at, and we ought to be able to tease that out, looking at the actual data combined with evidence like you saw just now. Let's go. Before we get into the data about autopilot, I thought it made sense just to take a step back and think about new technology because it's always rife with issues and tons of opposition. Radio would rot your brain if you listen to it too much, TV will ruin your eyes, the internet will make us all crazy, and our cell phones will spy on us 24 seven if we let them. Okay, those last two are actually kind of true, but you get the point. In order for us to advance as a species, it means we need to adopt new technology technologies, but we don't need to blindly trust them. A perfect example of this is when we switch from mechanical switches in automobiles for acceleration and deceleration to computerized ones back in the mid 80s. Do you remember that Toyota scandal where the cars were accelerating out of nowhere? Sudden acceleration was the term that people were throwing around and it was causing accidents. Well, this problem actually kind of began in the mid 80s when we switched from those mechanical switches for controlling acceleration and deceleration in a vehicle to the controller area network or CAN which it is called which is a built-in computer network in your car to control every little thing that it does. So when you press on the gas in a gas car today a signal is sent to a computer in the CAN that controller area network that tells it hey I want to go faster then there's some decisions that happen sort of an algorithm that runs basically checking all the other systems what's going on in the vehicle and if so if, if it all matches it will actually then tell the system to accelerate but there are all kinds of safety checks in there to make sure you don't do things that you're not supposed to do and harm the vehicle. So in general, this is seen as a good thing. But fast forward to 2009, and for some reason, Toyota started accelerating out of control and causing accidents. Originally, Toyota was blaming the driver since it seemed to happen to older drivers particularly. Now, this was until 2009 when a California Highway Patrol officer, Mark Saylor, and his three family members were killed in a high-speed crash that was caused by this. In total, this issue was linked to 31 accidents and 12 deaths, but the Sudden Acceleration Information Group Online reports that Toyota isn't alone, and these issues account for thousands of deaths worldwide. Now, this was a change to the car's internal system, not one that people even considered when buying their car. And while computers definitely help make cars safer with all the automated safety features, they are not without some major issues. So a company like Tesla that is pushing the boundaries of technology to make driving safer are bound to encounter some issues. It's simply part of the process to making things better, hopefully with much less of an error rate than Toyota had in that previous issue we were just talking about. But let's see what the data actually show. The first report that Tesla released was back in October of 2018, and they showed one crash-like event, and we'll call it an accident, for every 3.34 million miles when the car was in autopilot, so when autopilot was engaged. Now without autopilot, for the same fleet of cars, they had one accident for every 1.92 million miles. So that's about two times as safe, or it's close to that. Now the NHTSA, the National Highway Traffic and Safety Administration in the United States, for the same time 
time period reported that on average, a driver has a crash every 492,000 miles. So compared to the 3.34 million miles in autopilot, that's about seven times better. And in Q1 of 2019, they reported one accident for every 2.87 million miles in autopilot where it was engaged, and one accident for every 1.76 miles without autopilot being engaged. So the ratio of crash-like events to miles driven is going down, meaning it's getting worse, but it's still about 6.5 times better than the average reported by the NHTSA. But realistically, it's more like two to three times safer, as you can see in the comparison between the driving in autopilot versus driving without autopilot. And before you guys jump all over me and talk about apples and oranges and this and that in the comments, let me just point out that yes, this data is not representative. You can't really compare the NHTSA number to the Tesla number because the NHTSA number accounts for all driving scenarios. Autopilot is really only used on the freeways. It's not used on city streets yet. So that's why I took the comparison of autopilot to non-autopilot miles, which I know is still not perfect, but it's a much more realistic scenario than the NHTSA number. So yes, with a grain of salt, this is the data we have, but it is a positive sign. And as these numbers uh, kind of grow in terms of miles driven and the more scenarios in which Tesla's are driving in, these numbers will become a better apples to apples comparison. So if you've never seen autopilot before, I'm gonna give you just a quick overview of what it does. Right now I'm in my 2018 Tesla Model 3 long range rear wheel drive. This has autopilot version 2.5, which has eight cameras total, ultrasonic sensors for nearby objects, and a forward facing radar. So on the freeway is where it's designed to be used. I double tap the shift and now I'm in autopilot. You can see that the blue indicator here and the speed is set at 72, happened to be what I was going at the time that I entered it. And the visualization of all the vehicles coming and going as my car navigates on its own. So I need to keep my hand on the wheel in case I need to take over in the event of an emergency or whatever. But other than that, the car is gonna do it all on its own. It's gonna adjust the speed based on vehicles in front of me slowing down uh, or speed up to whatever uh, I have it set to as well as keep me in the lane. Like I'm in a turn here, my hand is on the wheel, but it's actually doing the turn for me. So that's the most basic form of autopilot. Beyond that, Tesla's added a lot of new kind of advanced features. One of them is called navigate on autopilot. So if I punch in a, a location that I want to navigate to, the car will actually drive me there from on-ramp all the way to off-ramp going around traffic uh, for slow, you know, people are slower than you, as well as taking those on ramps entirely on its own. Autopilot is pretty advanced. It has a lot of different quirks and features. In general, I think the lane keep and the speed adjustment are fantastic, but some of these other features are still kind of early days. And in the future, what we'll see is them just to get better and better with more data and more cars on the road until the point where it just becomes incredibly obvious that a human is not the safest option. Let's hop back to the studio now and just kind of wrap it up. So is Tesla Autopilot safe? Yeah, yeah, it definitely is on, in the aggregate, right? When you look at this data, it's all aggregated up, it's all rolled up, and yeah, it's clearly safer. Now, to what degree, I think is a difficult thing to answer, as I mentioned before, all the challenges with the data that we currently have, but overall, the signs are very positive that this is a good thing for driver safety. But it doesn't mean that it's perfect. And the thing that I really wanna emphasize is that when you aggregate data like this, when you take these big numbers of all the individual events and you roll them up and you see, oh look, it's all rosy and good, you lose sight of some of the details. People have died driving in autopilot. And just like Toyota wanted to blame the driver, it's kind of natural for a company to want to blame the user here. And maybe there is some fault there. I'm not saying that there isn't. But the point is, is that there have been injuries, there have been issues, as there are with all new technologies. It shouldn't be forgiving. We shouldn't just dismiss those. But Overall, when you look at it, I think we have some really positive signs here, and if we can work through these issues, we should be coming out much better off than if we hadn't pursued this at all. So what do you think? Do you have autopilot? What version do you have? What car do you have? How long have you been driving it? In what scenarios has it been really good for you? In what scenarios has it been 
not so good for you. I've talked about my experiences kind of extensively here on the channel and on the podcast, Our Ludicrous Future. So you can hear about you know me and my thoughts and where I'm at with that. But I would love to really hear from you. Leave me a comment down below and let me know what your experience has been like. As I said before, it's not a perfect system, but it clearly is showing good signs that this is going to help us in the long run here. So I think it's worth pursuing because that's how progress is made. So that's it for this one. I hope you enjoyed it. And don't forget, when you free the data, your mind will follow. I'll see you guys back here in the next one. Hey, thanks for watching the video. I hope you got something out of it. Now, if you want to dive a little bit deeper, become a part of the Teslanomics community, consider joining us on Patreon. So what we have set up are different things and ways to engage, such as a Discord group, which is like this chat room, that is just the folks that support the channel through Patreon. I'm on there almost daily, engaging in conversation about how Tesla and others like them are changing the world around us for the better. So if you'd like to learn more, go ahead and go to patreon.com slash and I hope to see you there soon.